Hey folks, Craig Danger, vinyl record player. Oh, back one more time for 1979. I'm talking about, of course, must have, and also, in some cases, maybe not all of them, underrated LPs from 1979. This, of course, is a series that we started up around, around 67, I think. Maybe 66, I think there was 67. But, you know what, we're uh, coming into the second to last one here, but uh, hey, let's talk today about some great albums uh, let's talk about a little bit of Canadian content up in here. And uh, also, let's talk about buckling up. And we're back! Uh, yeah, so, hey, I'm just gonna cut right into these albums today. Got a lot of good ones. Uh, you know what? And right off the hop, hey, collection is getting a little tight, friends. So, you know what? You're just going to have to excuse the old Craig Danger vinyl record player. Uh, maybe a little false advertising. The 1979's Rust Never Sleeps is underrated. Is it underrated? Oh. Oh. Oh, I can't even pretend. <laughs> I can't. This album went to number eight on the Billboard charts. Uh, gold, platinum. Eh, but here's the thing. It's a great album. So, I'm going to use that as an excuse. Uh, never hurts to talk a little bit about Neil Young and, of course, Rust Never Sleeps from 79. Woo! Really good one. Um, this would happen to be in my collection. I hadn't listened to it for quite a while, but you know what? Ooh, it's very good. Uh, maybe not my favorite album. That, of course, would be his uh, ninth studio album. I believe this is his tenth, uh, which, of course, uh, is uh, Comes a Time. Comes a Time is uh, definitely one of my favorites. Kind of grew up with that one. Obviously, the title track. Two, uh, four Strong Winds, woo, sizzling sort of country folk album. But this one, uh, yeah, what's really interesting about this one, which again, is it underrated? Oh, oh, all right, come on, uh, let a guy go. The record's, it's getting tight here, friends, it's getting tight. But, um, not, okay, not underrated, but a must-have. I would say this is some of Neil's uh, best material. A lot of interesting stuff reading up on the history of this particular album. Uh, particularly, uh, I guess at the time, uh, Neil had moved to Santa Cruz and basically had begun performing with a band called The Ducks and, you know, consisted of a member, a member of Moby Grape and a couple of other guys and turned out they were contracted. So if he was going to play out, he could only play with, with Crazy Horse. So what happened was he just ended up playing a whack of gigs in uh, Santa Cruz but anyway, this, this album, this is around that period of time, and then, uh, I think that was around 77. This, of course, is 79. Uh, he did actually, a lot of these songs are songs that are kind of uh, older songs. Uh, for example, Powderfinger uh, was one that had, you know, been started in 67, wasn't finished until 75, didn't even end up on this until 79, obviously. Um, and yeah, this, uh, much like if you look at the, uh, it's either the seven, I think it's the 77 episode, uh, you'll, uh, run into, uh, what a, another underrated, but is it, classic, uh, Jackson Brown's, uh, Running on Empty, of course. And, uh, you know what? Also similar vibe. A lot of this, of course, recorded, uh, with, on stage, Neil by himself, side one is, uh, you got Pocahontas, you got My My Hey Hey, Out of the Blue, uh, Thrasher, really good sort of acoustic jams, apparently a lot of overdubs on side one, and then side B, of course, is more of a rocky, uh, you got Powderfinger, you got Hey Hey My My, which was also a charting single, but uh, yeah, very kind of interesting how he kind of put this album together in that these were mostly live recordings with sort of the audience pulled out of the mix, you end up with... Really, what's, what's kind of a fantastic record? Take a look at that. You know, really kind of cool stuff. Actually, even the, the inside of this one is very cool. So if you can pick this up, a lot of kind of neat stuff. And then, of course, you've got uh, the, the lyric sheet here. Um, very cool. Uh, so again, yeah, yeah, a little Canadian content here. But again, uh, well, partially, I would say. I'm not even sure, does this count? Because, uh, of course, this would have been recorded by a Canadian in the United States. Uh, again, it's hard to say, but uh, hey, is this underrated? Mm, you know what? I'm not gonna fight you. If you're like, no, that's not underrated, Craig Danger, I'll fight you. I'll be like, I'm not gonna fight you. I'm not gonna fight you. It's all good. You seem like a fine gentleman or lady. Although if you're part of the demographics of people watching me, you're likely to be an older gentleman. 
Uh, but I will say, yeah, uh, uh, maybe not underrated, but kind of a must have. I gotta say, I'm really happy that I actually do own this one. Again, I'm not a monster Neil Young fan, but I think this, this record is definitely worth talking about. It's probably one of the best of the year. Again, less underrated, but definitely a must have. I think this is, uh, probably one of Neil's sort of genuine classics. And, uh, yeah, Rust Never Sleeps from 79. Uh, it is, uh, indeed a must have, and I'm skeptical that it would ever be called underrated, but hey, we just did it here. We, is anyone, have we been hit by a, a Neil Young oriented lightning bolt? We have not. So let's, uh, let's continue. And just wanted to thank everybody for watching. Uh, if you're still here, like, subscribe, that stuff really helps. Uh, certainly I would say, if you got any comments, if you have some 79 albums that you think are underrated and must haves, please put them in the comments. Uh, always love the discussion. Uh, very knowledgeable people I'm talking to all the time, which is always very cool. And yeah, like I say, liking, subscribing really helps. Uh, if you're going to subscribe, make sure you click the, the bell and click all or whatever. Otherwise, yeah, the, subs the subscribe thing, sometimes it doesn't even work. You'll never see me again. Don't you want to see the danger again? If you don't, that's fair. But uh, anyway, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, yeah, uh, appreciate any uh, insight you may have about 1979. Number two, uh, of course, a, a uh, band member friend, an ex-band member uh, who uh, was in a band with Neil called uh, the Minor Birds. I'm, of course, talking about, ooh, Rick James. And look at this cover, friends. Look at this cover. Woo! Here's Rick James. It's uh, kind of a little bit of a sexy superhero, I would say. Uh, obviously, he's right. You know, and if you're going to be a superhero, uh, why not have a team of hot ladies? That would be my question. I mean, obviously, given the opportunity, given a cape, given a high quality uniform, I'm going to say that Craig Danger would have to think a couple of times uh, before ruling out the concept of having a team of attractive ladies. Again, you know, I mean, one can have sidekicks. Uh, hey, I'm an equal opportunity sort of person. And if these ladies have superpowers outside of, um, you know, being well-developed physically, then uh, who isn't him, friends? Who isn't? But <laughs> enough of that. Uh, let's talk about the record. Uh, yeah, Rick James, uh, busting out of L7. Ooh, busting out on the funk. Kind of starts this album out. This is actually only seven tracks, this album, but really good, about 40 minutes. There's a lot of sort of, I believe, what, uh, what music writers would call funk workouts on this jam. But you know what? It is really good. Uh, and you know what? It doesn't suffer from any kind of that rough, we're starting to get into the machine uh, lead sort of drums and stuff in uh, 79. This is still very organic sounding. Um, again, it's, it's kind of more niche funk. This is not going to be the most accessible uh, Rick uh, James record, but really good. And there's even some ballads on here, but you know what? They be funky ballads. Really good ballads, uh, and I don't ever almost say that about soul ballads. Soul ballads, uh, often not the a favorite of the danger, uh, but you know what? This is uh, this record is surprisingly good, uh, and also let, let me say, unlike I think there was he did have a second LP in '79, which apparently was a little bit more disco flavored. This one, of course, not. And uh, if you watch my videos, you know that uh, my issue with disco is more its sameness. Uh, in that there seemed to be a lot of recycling of grooves. Not so with Rick James here. Uh, this one, I believe this is his second or third album. Probably his third. It's probably his second or, second or third. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. And you know what? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and call this a classic. Is it underrated? Oh, for sure it is. Um, you know, the, his debut was more of, I guess, a, a hot seller. Uh, but uh, this one, ooh, very good. Of course, it is sort of on the funk tip, so this is less of a less of a crossover sort of dyna dynamic than uh, many of his records to come in the '80s. Uh, but again, Rick rocking it on this one, and of course, uh, whoa, whoa, look at that, Rick! Little, you know, on, on the inner sleeve, you get the lyrics, and then you get uh, Stone City Band, my man, sporting. I would say, whoa. I'm not gonna say he's wearing a jock, a jock strap, but uh, I, I mean our friend, uh, our friend uh, Rick may uh, have come equipped. Uh, I don't know what to say, but uh, wow, uh, he's either wearing a cod piece or 
God has given him a human cut piece. I, again, I, I really don't know, but uh, yeah, definitely underrated. Rick James busting out of L7. Uh, obviously, even just saying the title uh, makes me excited. It brings excitement to the danger. Um, so Rick James busting out of L7. One of, I think, the best albums of, of uh, 79, but also definitely underrated. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it a must-have. You can pick this one up for about 10 bucks or below in a lot of cases. And uh, yeah, even if you got to pony up 15, 20 for it, it's a fun record. And like I say, only seven songs, but pretty good. Uh, and also there's some nice love jams that are also funky, uh, which I, again, rarely say. So Rick James, busting out of L7. Can we say it one more? I'm not going to say it one more time. I'm not going to say it one more. Bust! Okay, stop. Stop. <laughs> uh, oh! Okay, now we're talking about some real Canadian content. Uh, if you're a li listener or a watcher of the channel, you may know that I'm originally from the North. Uh, that being a nation known as Canada. And uh, wow, growing up we heard this a lot. And uh, you know what? It's been a while since I've lived in Canada, so I'm not subject to the classic rock formula, which is basically, let's take 30 songs and play them over and over and over and over and over and over again, all day, every day. And hope people don't notice. Uh, but, uh, ooh, you want to talk about uh, underrated in the United States, I would say. Uh, in England, yes. In Canada, no. Not underrated in Canada, for sure. But this is April Wine's Harder Faster from 1979. Woo! And, oh, hold on. Yeah, you're thinking, oh, I don't know about that cover, Craig. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a whole lot of Canadian chest hair right there, friends. A whole lot of Canadian chest hair coming at you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, a little bit of a shout out to uh, John Candy and SCTV, of course. But um, yeah, there's the band, friends. Uh, again, these, these guys, not a bunch of shy gentlemen. Originally from uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, many of them. And actually, they ended up moving, making their home base uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, where they basically. Uh, they basically started as a band around 69. This, of course, is 79. This, of course, would be their eighth album. Um, and uh, you know what? This one's a rocker. This one's really good. Particularly, of course, the lead off, off track uh, on this one, which is, of course, uh, what? I know. Uh, you probably have heard the song. If you're Canadian, you've heard the song eight th trillion times. And that would, of course, be, I like to rock. Uh, this one is still good. This one is still legendary. Obviously, it's like stealing riffs from everybody, but you know what? It is, uh, I still think it's a remarkably fun and wicked song. Uh, obviously, following that, you've got Say Hello, which, of course, that was sort of the follow-up track. And if you're from Canada, you've heard also that a billion times. But, uh, ooh, two rockin' rockin' ones. Uh, you got Tonight, you've got uh, Before the Dawn, but you know what? A little shocker as I was listening to this LP. How about a cover of King Crimson's 21st century Schizoid Man? Whoa, bit of a mind blower there. But you know what? Uh, really good, really good. I, again, this this album just sort of, it's 79 and things are changing and punk rock has kind of come and by that point it's kind of gone. Uh, and of course disco, but you know what? These guys are bringing back sort of that mid 70s uh, hard rock vibe and uh, ooh, it's good. It's it's all sort of Boston vibes and you know that kind of like party rock and uh, yeah, <laughs> gotta say it's fun. Uh, it, as far as uh, Canadian bands from the seventies, April One is just like a a pack of fun and certainly this album is is super fun. A lot of riffing throughout. Uh, some kind of all, almost like metal esque sort of a. Uh, of, of shredding, not shredding, more ripping, because uh, it is still 79. But yeah, this is all party rock, and you know what? Really fun album. Not the longest album. This one might be ticking in under 40 minutes for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, what are you going to expect from these brothers? What are you going to expect? Uh, I'm just saying rocking. And uh, underrated, prob let me say it's underrated in England. I guarantee you this is underrated in Germany and Australia, and everywhere except Canada. Uh, and yeah, probably in the United States too. Anyway, but I would say it's a must have. And you know what? I think I picked this, this one up for five bones. This is, uh, of course, on the Capitol label, 
Uh, it is a U.S. press. But yeah, look at, look at even the inner sleeve. Look at these 70s vibes coming off of this. Oh, and then, whoa. And then, uh, what? Flip it. What do we got here? What? Do, what? I mean, do they like to rock? It's clear. It's clear. I mean, uh, really, is there any doubt that uh, April Wine like to rock? But uh, April Wine, harder, faster, a definite underrated. I would call it a must-have. And that's mainly because, yeah, you can pick this up for 10 bucks all day in America. Sold a lot of copies, definitely in Canada. And, uh, yeah, fun album, fun album. It's, uh, I mean, you tell me this isn't fun. You tell me this isn't fun. In the comments, tell me why this isn't fun. Uh, you can't. You can't. But anyway, that's, uh, of course, April Wine and um, Harder Faster. Let's uh, turn to something entirely different. This is uh, actually a new one for me. Um, how about if you knew Susie? Susie Quattro, 1979. 1978, pretty much everywhere in the world except where? Canada and, of course, the United States. Uh, now, this is Susie Quattro circa 1979. Before that, Susie's all young and man-eater and, and sexy and she's wearing leather jumpsuits. Well, you know, they're softening up the image. This is a mature uh, Susie Quattro. Again, this is the first album I've ever purchased from her, but really kind of fun songs on this. Uh, she doesn't do a lot of the writing on her own, but um, there's some cool covers, uh, but also uh, Really good singles by sort of the uh, the songwriting team that was behind Susie Quattro, like uh, If You Can't Give Me Love, uh, also um, The Race Is On. Really good tracks on here. I have to admit, I was really impressed with Susie Quattro. Again, I this is my, the, my first Susie Quattro record, but I was like, oh, very cool. And obviously, oh, oh, Su Susie looking good. She looking mm, real soft on the back. Uh, but again, this is sort of a change of image, and you know, she's delving into the 1980s. But again, this is all very kind of like late 70s sort of uh, studio rock and stuff, and it's pretty good. Um, there's, of course, a cover of uh, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, which is okay. Again, I'm just not a huge fan of the song. Uh, I just feel like I've heard it a trillion times. But she does a pretty good rendition. Uh, Tom Petty's Breakdown is on this. Very good rendition. Uh, really good cover of uh, Tired of Waiting for You. I, I was reading about how um, basically Chrissy Hind might have taken that cover idea of covering a kink song and brought it to, of course, uh, the Pretenders debut with, with of course, uh, Stop Your Sobbing. But uh, good version. Again, here it's more about uh, the songs sort of written for her. Like, uh, like I say, The Race Is On, Don't Change My Luck is also good. This is, again, a surprising record for me. And yeah, this, this is the kind of record that makes you want to kind of delve a little deeper. And certainly, I will keep my eyes peeled for the, some of the earlier uh, albums, like uh, starting in 73. Again, Susie was huge in Britain and obviously maybe a little bit in Europe, but never really got her due kind of in the United States, despite actually being from the United States. But uh, yeah, it's a fun album, and uh, is it a hundred percent must have? Uh, I mean, you know, I might be cheating a little. I might be cheating, but is it underrated? Oh, guaranteed it is. Uh, and again, nice sort of, uh, sort of. Uh, I'm not gonna say hard rock, but rockin' vibes. And uh, yeah, again, ooh, I mean, Susie, Susie looking good. But uh, yeah, if you knew Susie, little little, uh, little autograph in the corner there. Uh, this one you can probably pick up for under 10 bucks. I picked it up for under 10 bucks. Really good condition. Uh, and uh, yeah, that of course is uh, Susie Quattro. Another must have and uh, underrated. Uh, underrated must have from 1979. And to close it out, uh, 1979. This one really surprised me. Uh, again, 79 is not my year. Uh, if you know Danger, you know that he loves the hell out of 65 to 75. And then it starts to get a little tricky. Uh, but I will say this one shocked me, if only because it kind of delves back into that uh, recent past. And of course, I'm talking about the album Let's Talk It Over from 79. Uh, Story of Lee, he basically records a, a lot of singles throughout the 60s, works with a lot of soul artists, never really gets you know, much, much due, ends up recording an album around 79 called, of course, Let's Talk It Over. Wow, really good album. Sort of nicknamed early on Little JB. Uh, because of sort of a similarity to uh, James Brown. But you know what? Ooh, this is 
is a fantastic record. This record does not feel like 79. I would say it's more like 70, 71. Very James Brown vibes. Uh, this album has been sampled to death by rappers. Why? Because those grooves are so funky. Uh, really, really good. The original of this record, of course, is super expensive. That's why I don't actually have a hard copy, but this is available on um, streaming. And that's a, the funny thing about Lee Fields is this is his debut album from 79. After this, not a lot going on for Lee until about the, until about the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, soul starts to come back in a bit of a bigger way. Uh, you know, less of a sort of machine-led scenario. A lot of that old-school soul starts to come back in. He starts touring. Oddly enough, most of Lee's real strong success would, of course, come from uh, the 2000s. Uh, you know, a little bit of soundtrack work. And of course, again, a lot of rapper sampling. Let's talk it over. There are some fat grooves. It is a delightful 1970, 71 James Brown-esque album. I would say, you know, even more advanced because of course, James Brown was an innovator. Uh, Lee Field has the benefit of having all of this music. And wow, still really innovative sounding. And again, the production on this one, we're not talking about no uh, cocaine on the boards and 48 track studios and long sessions and track after track of, no, this is very sort of minimal funk, but uh, woo, rumbling and just very, very good. I would encourage you definitely to check it out on the streaming. There was actually a recent uh, reissue of this and certainly you can get it on Comeback Disc, but you can stream it for now and uh, wow, really fantastic. This is the kind of stuff that actually makes me want to get into Lee's later stuff. Again, once you get into the 2000s, obviously the production is very different. But despite the fact that this record is from 79, oh man, that production is so early 70s. And ooh, The Danger loves the hell out of that sound. And yeah, Lee Field, baby James Brown, is he, is he, or, or is he James Brown 2? Electric Boogaloo. Again, it's, it's up for debate, as everything uh, may be. But again, another unheralded, Definitely super underrated and a must-have. Uh, I would say, again, considering the expense of the original pressing, if you can pick up that re-release, do so. But also, again, available on streaming, and there's a really nice sort of extended version, including tracks that were not on the original album. And uh, wow, let's talk it over. Lee Fields, my final of five underrated must-have LPs from 1979. So, uh, yeah, wrapping this up. Pretty soon. Again, we have one more, but I think I'm uh, moving into a new series over the next months. But again, uh, thanks everyone. If you're still here, give me a like, give me a subscribe. That stuff really helps. Uh, my last video, uh, by this point, I will have gone to the uh, Fool in Love Festival, which is kind of a hardcore classic soul festival in Los Angeles. Plan to do a video on that. Uh, but, uh, ooh, my last video was not very popular. That's okay. Uh, but again, all your likes and subscribe help it help the algorithm, and then all of a sudden people are watching the old nature, uh, which is uh, kind of the point. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you again for tuning in, and you know what? I'm just going to have to see you on the next one.